The churning of ancient machines thundered their way through the stone halls. With every beat, Ionan's heart fluttered. He thought to himself, why would the divines let him make such a stupid decision? His eyes traced every corner, every stone edge, every bronze structure. He felt droplets of sweat glide down his face, leaving their salty taste on his lips. He continued down the hall slowly as he tried to steady his breath. When a burst of steam suddenly surged from the gated floor below, Ironen panicked, throwing himself to the wall. The clank of steel against stone echoed the hallway. His lungs pumped and pumped and pumped, desperately trying to keep him stable. He thought of home for a second. He needed a happy thought. That would help. The peaks of high rock, the crisp cool on the skin, the clean air that caressed your throat. Not like down here, this muggy, humid hall of death. The sound of steps dragged his thoughts from home, bringing him back to reality. These were rapid steps. Ionin panicked, his heart quickened. He knew of nothing he could do except raise his war axe ready to fight. There was no way he would have been able to run in his current condition. Falma, he was done for. The squeals and shrieks of these vicious monstrosities could now be heard as they neared closer, racketing their feet against the metal floor. Ionin, with the last of his magicka, weaved his left hand, conjuring sparks that spiraled his fingers. The sparks flickered for a few moments, but fizzled out, leaving Ionin alone with his axe. It all felt hopeless now. Ah! A sound bellowed from the same direction, followed by a commotion. The deathly screams of Falmer intensified, but were soon followed by a frightening silence. Then, amongst the sounds of whirring machines, steps began again, this time heavier, but slower. Iron and Hopeful called out, Who's there? A shadow spread itself across the stone floor at the end of the hall, coming from the corridor to the left. Ionin panicked at first when no one responded, but then he heard the familiar sound of post-battle grunting. Someone from the company, perhaps? An unrivaled feeling of relief washed over Ionin as a familiar face made its way around the corner. A hulking Nord staggered into clear vision. Brokey! Ionin shouted out, excited to see a friendly face. Brokey was a tall, broad beast of a man with wiry blonde hair that came down to his shoulders. He wore braids lining the side of his face so that his hair wouldn't get in the way during combat. Brokey yelled out as he staggered towards him. Ironen, you bloody milk drinker, what happened to you? A gruff chuckling followed. Ironen approached and met him halfway. He could now see Brokey clearly. Dirt and blood caked his hair and face. His scaled armor was torn up. Brokey's greatsword was being dragged alongside him, bent and bloody. I got separated with Kane two levels up. We ran into something out of a nightmare. A giant brass man with breath of steam. Brokey's eyes were now drawn to the mild burns of red that marked Ironen's face. The burns. That was the steam. Kane got it a lot worse, though... He didn't have to endure. His face was quickly smashed in by its hammer. I tried to fight it, but it was just its too strong. I had to flee. I came through here, killed a lot of Falma, but I'm exhausted. I would have been done for if it wasn't you who turned the corner. Brokey brought his calloused palm to the side of Ironen's cheek for a moment, but didn't give it the usual pat as to not aggravate the burn. Well, I'm glad you did, because we have problems ahead. I came through here to see if there was another way deeper into the ruins, but... Since you ended up here, I assume that isn't the case. No, I followed the only path I could, Ainen replied. Damn this place, Brokey said frustrated. All right, well our contract isn't over yet, boy. Come with me. The rest of the men are with the wizard at the entrance to the vault. We found it, but it ain't pretty. They began trotting down the stone halls back the way Brokey came. The stone halls opened up into a hallowed cavern, littered with bodies of Falma and men Ironen once knew. It looks like we were assaulted again. Shaw's bones, these Falma are persistent, Brokey concluded. Ironen trudged through the rocky soil towards a body lent neatly against a pile of rubble. He knelt down to inspect it. The poor fellow's usual dark skin had grown paler and covered in stretches of purple veins. His frizzy red guard beard was matted with copious amounts of bloody saliva. Don't go getting hit by one of those putrid creatures. Their poison is nasty, painful, Brokey warned as he gestured towards the body. While you're there, check him for anything useful. 
Einan began shuffling his hands through the red guard's linen wraps and leather pockets. He smoothed his hands all over until he found a small bag of about 20 septums, a flawed garnet, and a torn bandage. Nothing that's going to help us in here, but if we get out alive, this guy's buying drinks, Einan replied with a cheeky smirk. The two stopped chatting and began making pace towards the grand Dwemer structure at the end of the cavern. Gigantic walls of bronze reached as high as the cavern roof, garnished with Dwemer inscriptions and busts of dwarves. As Einan trudged his way up the steep gradient of soil, the rest of the company came into view. The wizard stood by the intricate vault door made of circular rings and shiny gems. He was casting spells, presumably deciphering a lock. Whatever spell it was, Ionan was entirely unfamiliar. Destruction was the only kind of magic a warrior would need. The band of misfit mercenaries jumped into action as soon as Brokey and Ionan came into view, brandishing their weapons. Hold up, it's me, Brokey. I also found Ionan. Helga ran to Brokey, embracing him with all her might. Helga, also a Nord, was a big slab of a woman. She had the height of an orc with broad shoulders and strong arms, but this did not take away from her womanly figure, and she also had wide hips for birthing true Nords, and large breasts for feeding them. Brokey, just slightly shorter in stature, grabbed her by her soft freckled cheeks and pulled her face towards him so they could meet lips. He began running his hands through her long red hair, scrunching it in a fist of passion. This was enough for Iron, and he left the lovers to their reunion while he went to greet the rest of the company. There was Hammer, the strangely soft-spoken orc with a penchant for violence. He wore orcish armor, imported from Orsinium. It was beautiful craftsmanship, not like the chunky armor you see the stronghold orcs wear in Skyrim. Hammer sat on the flat rock, spinning his warhammer against the ground. The others were Andius, Decian, and Hathar, two Imperials and another Nord. Ionan was shocked to see how few were left. By the gods you're alive, you must have the gods kissing your ass or something, Andius said. I saw you and Cain get separated by all those Falmer. Andius approached and put a hand on his shoulder. Ainan did the same to Andius and then brought him into a hug. Well, I guess the divines thought I deserved to see your ugly mug again, Ainan replied as they both burst into laughter. Andius turned to face Decian and Hathar. Decian, get over here. You haven't even met this guy yet. He has some godly magic. You should see what this guy can do to a troll. Andius, with his hand on Ainan's shoulder, brought him over to greet them. The group exchanged greetings, and soon after, Brokey approached the cheery men while Helga trotted off to talk to the wizard. All right then, you bloody milk drinkers. Enough with the hippity-hoppity wives talk. We have work to do. Now, I have to split you brothers up, but it's the most strategic plan. Decian, take your bow up to that perch there call out when you see anyone. Brokey pointed to a place atop a stone column. Now, Andius, I need you with Ionan and Hammer. Helga, Hatha, and I will protect the wizard, but we need you to get back to the boiler room we passed through. Andius raised his bare palm to his forehead, sweeping the sweat back into his hairline, continuing his fingers through his dark hair. Andius let go a sigh. What in Nern could possibly be back there? Helga relayed orders from the wizard to me. Apparently, he needs one of those brass spiders to open the gate. Alive. How in the divine's name are we supposed to get one of those alive? Captain, I'm getting sick of this gray skin ordering us around to do obtuse tasks such as this. We already lost over half our men getting into this cavern. Brokey clapped his hands together. Well then, all the more reason to finish the job. Just think of all the women who will be swooning at the mention of Andius the Brave. He who survived where others could not. Andius rolled his eyes and nodded. Don't worry, Hammer is a big boy. He can hold it down. Brokey chuckled as he looked to the big orc. Hammer stood up, saying nothing, and began heading to the boiler room. Ionan and Andius readied themselves and followed. And Ionan! Brokey's voice carried through the still air. Don't get separated this time. So a giant, an orc, an elf... What kind of elf? Doesn't matter. Andius shot back. Ionan swiftly replied, Well, yes, honestly, if it were an Altmer, I would presume tall, snobby, probably magically gifted. If it were a Bosma, I'd think short. Okay, okay, I get it. There was a brief lull in the conversation. Well, which is it? Ionan asked, chuckling, but still genuinely curious. I don't know, now that I think about it, it doesn't really make sense. He replied as he waltzed down the corridor, spinning his sword cheerfully. Hammer buddy, sign of anything yet? Andius shouted out. Ainan perked up. 
Andius, I think we should keep our voices a little lower. Falma and Machine still hide in the walls. Hammer seemed to ignore him, focused on the task at hand. Suddenly, Hammer stopped ahead. He looked left, then back to the others, and then raised his Warhammer with one hand, pointing at the corridor to the left. He then gestured with his free hand for them to follow. The two men looked at each other. Andius shrugged and walked ahead. Come on, big boy says this way. Ironen follows carefully as an air of discomfort washes over him. Something was wrong. He could see translucent figures dashing all around. His heart began speeding. Thump, thump, thump. He shook his head and jiggled out his arms, trying to clear this anxiety. He was probably just hallucinating. He had been through a lot. The three mercenaries turned to the corridor of bronze and stone, which led down to the boiler room. Hammer slams open the brass doors, which gives way to a visage of pipes, grates, and cogs of bronze all working together. They enter, the streams of steam jet from every direction. It was difficult to contemplate the complexity of this machine. Ironen could feel the warm, thick air lay itself on every surface of his skin. Breathing became harder as it clouded his lungs. Andius began coughing to his right. All right, let's get one of these critters and get out of here. Ironen, I think you should give it a good shock first. Make it easier for Hammer. He pointed over to a spider worker fiddling with some machinery using its spindly metal limbs. Hammer only ever spoke when he had something important to say. Ainen raised his left hand, flexing and weaving his fingers until he felt magic a surge from within, racing its way through his arm and up into his hand. Sparks began to flicker and dance between his fingertips. He focused his vision on the spinning sphere atop its body. He drew his elbow back and in a mighty thrust forward unleashed a torrent of lightning at the spider machine. Following a burst of light and a thunderous crack, the spell hit the spider, causing it to clatter and stun as steam emanated from its joints. Hammer and Andius ran towards it. The orc grabbed its top and forced it to the ground, splaying its legs outward. Andius then took his rope and began tying it up so that it would not be able to escape. It was still putting up a desperate struggle. Hammer was forced to hold it against his chest with both arms clenched tightly around it. I'd shake your hand, but it seems a little hard to do right now. Andius said as Hammer glared back at him unamused. Don't worry, big guy, I got your weapon. Andius bent down to pick up the Warhammer, a marvellous make, strong ebony moulded into a beautiful weapon. Andius grasped the ornate grip of the hammer and lifted it. It was lighter than he expected. Alright, let's get out of here. I can't believe we didn't run into more trouble. Something's off, something isn't right. Falma should have been stalking these halls, Ionan proclaimed as his eyes scattered around the room. Yeah, alright Jitters, we're coming, Andius responded while he let a brief chuckle out. Brokey called out to Decian. Any movement yet? Decian stood from his crouched position and raised his hand to his throat and shook it. Brokey was beginning to worry. The Falmer were relentlessly attacking them, but the attacks have simply ceased. What was going on? A booming cry echoed its way from the rocky perch at the eastern side of the cavern, followed by a daunting sound of tumbling rocks and a terrible crunch. Brokey jerked his head back to Decian's position only to see his crumpled corpse at the bottom of the rocky structure with a bolt through his eye. Ready your weapons! Brokey cried out as he saw brass spheres jetting steam racing their way to their position. We've got machines coming! Helga grabbed her hide shield and her spear of Nordic metal. She ran to the Dunmer wizard. Send us! Machines are approaching fast. How much longer until you can get this vault open? Sender stood in common brown robes with his hand raised, directing magical energy to specific sections of the vault door. I told you, I need one of the Dwemer spiders. Yes, we sent some men to retrieve one, but they aren't back yet, and we're about to get barraged, Helga explained. Well then, there's no time for idle chatter. Do what you are paid to do and defend me. She was furious at Sender's lack of apathy, but she quickly ducked off to join the others. Hathar stood to the right of Brokey. He brandished his steel battle axe. Time for some action, he joyously said. Helga came up to the left of Brokey as he stood ready to fight, twisting the leather grip of his claymore. The spheres plummeted through the gravel floor. Suddenly, their still-faced bodies of metal were bursting from their shell, firing bolts at the Nords. Hathar dived to the ground as Helga pulled Brokey into a crouched position behind her shield. Some shots flew overhead, others pinned themselves into her shield. The force rattled her arm. The three sprung from the defensive positions to charge at the machines, closing the distance. Gravity helped them barrel down the slope of thick soil, feeding momentum of which they used to assist their initial strikes to the machines. 
Helga threw all her force behind a piercing strike right through the blank face of the closest dwarven machine. She immediately raised her shield to her left to block an incoming bolt as she reefed her spear from the now broken automaton. Brokey cleaved the crossbow arm off the automaton that fired at Helga, grabbed it by the neck and hauled it in front of him as a meat shield. A hail of bolts struck its metal, sparks and shrapnel flying in every direction. The vibrations of the machine came to a halt in Brokey's hands. He heaved the pile of gears and tossed it at a crowd of the others, causing them to stumble back on their spherical bases. Before they could recover, Brokey was jamming his claymore between their vital gears. Meanwhile, Hathar was swinging and bashing with his battle axe. He ducked to the ground using a piece of a fallen machine as a shield against bolts. The three Nords fought tirelessly, but the cursed things kept coming. Through the gaps in their ranks, Brokey saw a glimpse of bronze doors opening. His heart sunk under the assumption that even more machines were on their way. Suddenly, Iron and Hammer and Andius burst from the entrance on the far side of the cavern. Over here, help us fight these things! Brokey called out as he continued pounding blade against machine. A bolt of lightning flew from Iron and in the distance, connecting with three of the infernal machines, causing them to malfunction and collapse. Ionan and Andius charged into the fray and joined the fight. Brokey spent the brief moment in awe as the steaming machines fell apart, sinking into the soil. He turned to Helga, watching her pull her spear from the machine impaled on the ground. She looked at Brokey and smiled a grin of satisfaction, followed by a wink of her right eye. The moment seemed to last a lifetime for Brokey. Her brilliant blue eyes like two chunks of starling. Oh, how much he loved her. And then... A stray bolt planted itself into the left side of her neck. Falling to her knees, Helga grasped the wound. Brokey felt his stomach fall to the ground. An agonizing scream of fear filled the cavern as he sprinted to his fallen lover. He skidded through the soil to her side as the other mercenaries fought the rest of the machines in the background. She looked at him for any shred of comfort he could offer her. Those eyes of Stalrim seemed to be melting as falls of tears poured down her face. Brokey panicked and crying, desperately trying to figure out what to do as her panicked breaths made him increasingly conscious of the moment's reality. Blood was cascading down the side of her neck, the bolt still lodged in her throat. She tried to say his name, but it was near impossible as her lungs slowly filled. He knew she was done for. She was drowning in her own blood. Knowing that nothing else could be done, he embraced her while he convulsed with cries of pain. Her fingers clenched, his sides struggling to accept her fate. Ainan and the others desperately fought to keep the machines from getting to them. Helga's rapid breaths began to slow. A large intake of air followed by two half-breaths. Brokey could feel her in his arms, dying. He pulled her tighter as he gritted his teeth and groaned in sorrow. Her breathing stopped, her hands slumped, her head dropped its weight on Brokey's shoulder. He fell to the rocky soil with her in his arms, embracing her body, crying out and shaking furiously. In the aftermath of the battle, Hathar walked over. Brokey had been hugging her body for a while. Captain, I'm so sorry, but we need to get into the vault. There could be more of these machines coming. Let them come, I'll kill all of them. Captain, don't go throwing your life away. I understand your pain, but we can still get through this. Brokey still lay with Helga's body, looking at her lifeless face. I know you do. It's just, it's just so damn hard. It hurts so much. Hathar crouched down and hugged him tightly. You can beat it. I could and you're twice the man I am. Brokey returns the embrace, tears still flowing. Helga is in Sovngarde now, watching you. Come on, you've got to impress her. All right. Let's get this done. Brokey rose to his feet. A surge of vigor filled him. I need a stiff drink and there is no way I'm going to get one in here. Hammer, get that spider to the damn wizard. Ainan looked to Brokey as their eyes met. Ainan nodded in sympathy and then continued with Hammer to the wizard at the vault door. Andius was looking around for Decian. Where is Decian? Hathar looked at Brokey, sharing a moment of shame, and then turned to Andius. Don't worry, son. We sent him back up top. He's making a run to Carthwaston to get the rest of the company. Hathar didn't like lying, but he knew that Andius would be destroyed, knowing his brother had died and they couldn't afford another mourning soldier. The whole group of mercenaries made their way to the top of the rocky soil slope and over to the vault door. 
Hammer and Ironen were standing back as the wizard was casting beams of bright light at the blue gemstones that decorated the bronze door of swirls and spheres. His other hand seemed to be drawing some kind of energy from the Dwemer spider. Red sparks crackled from its core, flowing into his hand. Suddenly, the bright blue gemstones went pale, almost as if glass, and then the spheres began to shift. Ainen had never seen a door like this. The rings on the door shifted around it, the rings locked into place, and then a sudden screech sent the door breaking and retracting in four different directions. It was finally open. The Dunmer wizard strolled in immediately, almost knowing what to expect while the rest of the company followed. The air in here was ancient. This vault had been closed for thousands of years. How had these structures remained in such stellar condition? The brief corridor leading in opened up into a large cube room. The walls were lined with Dwemer chests containing innumerable worth. In the center was a pedestal of obsidian with dwarven metal trimming its angles. Atop the pedestal was a square box. It looked like it were made of the same metal as the rest of the ruins, except it pulsated with a strange energy. As it pulsated, its surface looked like a starry night sky, but then it returned to its bronze state. Ainan's gut felt like it was dropping to the floor with every pulse. He stared at the box in awe. There was a pull to it, as if the box had its own gravity. The rest of the group didn't seem to notice this. They were scouring the chests, filling burlap sacks full of immaculate gems, stones of red, blue, and green. The wizard called out, No one touch the lexicon. Don't worry, elf, you can have this silly box. Andia said gleefully as he filled his sack full of gems. He found one particularly gorgeous amethyst. Ah, this is a pretty one. I'll keep this one for Desian. His wife loves purple. Hathar felt sick. Brokey was understandably quiet. He just watched the door as the rest of them cleaned out the vault. Ionan's head began spinning and he started to stumble around a little as the whole room became a blur. The lexicon, however, was still in focus. Words surged his head, some unknown language calling to him. The others began to notice him stumbling towards the lexicon. Ionan, are you alright? But Brokey's concern could not be heard over the intense speech ringing in his ears. In front of him, the wizard Sendus was weaving his hands around the cube, little green sparks connecting the cube to his fingertips. These sparks began to grow in intensity. Sendus' fingertips looked as if they began to cook, the grey skin slowly turning black. Suddenly, a crack of thunder rung throughout the room. Iron in his trance didn't seem phased and continued towards the lexicon, still pulsing with the image of the night sky. The other mercenaries had dropped to the ground when the thunder cracked. Sendus was no longer weaving any magic. His body was entirely black, like tar. He crumbled into ash, robes falling to the floor unaffected. Ainen continued, the cube still calling him. Brokey rushed to save Ainen from touching the lexicon, but it was too late. Ainen was mere moments away from grasping the sickening item. He grabbed the cube, one palm either side. Bright green energy seared his palms, its light bursting from underneath them, nearly blinding the rest of the room. His eyes went pitch black. His body began shaking rapidly. The voices in his head spoke faster and faster. He was terrified, but he could not let go. His life played before his eyes in a split second, but the other lives played. Thousands of other lives, visions of a giant Dwemer machine, decimating armies, trees talking to each other, a land split in two. Stars began to fill the darkness of his eyes. Brokey tackled him, trying to separate him from the cube. Ainen began screaming, secrets, visions, truths, all overflowing his mind. Then, it all stopped. Ainen awoke. The smell of sulfur infiltrated his nose. The ground was wet, soppy mud. He stood to try and understand his surroundings. There was no light, but he could see. The ground became tar-like and began boiling. The heat quickly became scalding. His feet were burning and there was nowhere to go. Where are my boots? Where are my clothes? He thought as he began patting his skin. The burning had ceased, but the ground was still bubbling. From the pitch black ground arose a corpse concealed by layers of tar and mud. He tried wiping away the tar to see who it was, but it was impossible to rub off. He scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed with his palms, but he could not reveal the silhouette. A searing pain shot suddenly up through Iron and spine, as if a knife had run its way up his back, ending at the nape of his neck. The pain stopped, and the stars birthed. The sky was filled with innumerable stars. The Magna Ghi had left. The black tar ground stretched infinite, reflecting the stars of the black sky. The sound of breathing entered his ears as he looked to the corpse. It was breathing. 
Einan watched as the black tar slid off the corpse, revealing an unclothed man. He was familiar. The corpse's eyes burst open, perfect reflections of the starry sky. The breathing became rapid. It began writhing around, splashing tar all over. This can't be real. The body stood. It marched over, staring into his eyes. Ionan felt the most intense fear he had ever felt in his life. He tried to move, but he couldn't. Paralyzed with fear, the familiar corpse stopped a mere step from him. It stared into him, burying its gaze into his soul. Both he and the corpse looked up. The sky split open and the sun emerged. The corpse was incinerated and wisps of smoke scattered, swirling around his body. They swam into his throat, drowning him. His eyes began to water as smoke seeped from them, though the sun dried those tears. He choked for an eternity. Wake up! Come on! Brokey slapped Iron and Hart across the face. He was unconscious on the floor, next to the lexicon. He continued to shake him, desperate to see him awake. Finally, after what seemed like an age, Ionan sputtered and came to. Sitting up in a panic, Brokey saw that his eyes were as black as night. Ionan took no notice of the men surrounding him, only staring directly at the opposite side of the room. Brokey? He shouted suddenly. Hatha? Andius? Anyone? Andius jumped in front of him. We're right here, Ionan. Look at me. We're right here with you. Silence. He had stopped speaking. What in Nern is going on with him? Hammer exclaimed in an unusual panic. It wasn't like him to yell. I don't know, that thing did something to him. Brokey said, pointing to the lexicon. Shaw's blood, the wizard is completely gone. He's been turned to ash, Hathar said, inspecting the pile of remains. We need to get out of here, Andius panicked. More of those machines could be on their way. We got what we came for. Now let's get out. Brokey turned to silence the hysteria. We go with Ionan, or not at all. He needs help. Ionan's head jerked rapidly towards Brokey as he let those words go. He murmured words, but none could understand him. What are you saying? I can't understand you. The muscles surrounding Ionan's mouth tried to form speech, but to no avail. He groaned with pain and his head began to shake ever so slightly. His lips moved once more. I'm listening, son. Tell me. Brokey watched his mouth in anticipation. Help me. A fist launched forward, punching Brokey in the throat, causing him to fall back and grasp for air. What are you doing? yelled Hathar. He sprung to his feet, leaping to the far side of the vault. Andius rushed to his captain to help him as he recovered his breath. The rest readied their weapons, taking stance and moving towards Ionan. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, the life is a lie, you're a lie, you're a lie, you're a lie. Ionan shouted frantically, pointing at his crew. Numidium is truth. Kagranak was right. You all lie. You're all lies. Dreams, dreams, 1,000 dreams. Do you dream? Because I dream. Hammer ran towards Ionan, but in an instant he conjured flames to engulf him. A cyclone of fire. Rage for all but a second, leaving behind only the charred corpse of the orc. Green elf, grey elf, how about a sea elf? Ionan, stop this madness! Hathar shouted, drawing his attention. Tell me, Hathar, are you an elf? I am one part elf, but parts elf, you are none. Now stand back and watch this spell, because now, dear Hathar, you are done. A swirl of red energy shot from Ionan's right hand and held the Nord in stasis, leeching the very life within him. Andius pitched a knife straight at Ionan. He managed to catch it with his left hand just before it reached his face. As the knife was thrown, Brokey charged in, swinging his greatsword down at his right arm, piercing flesh and chopping bone like wood. The red magic and trapping Hathar ceased and the Nord struggled to recover. Ainen's arm lay unmoving on the floor. He stood, seemingly unaffected by pain. The mercenaries stood back, their hearts swelling with fear. Now that's no way to treat a friend. What will I do without my arm? Black eyes darted to the side. That was very rude. I'm going to take something of yours now. Brokey jumped back and braced for an attack, but it wasn't him he was attacking. A knife flew back across the room with blinding speed. The others turned to see what happened, confused by the apparent lack of result. Fine light of red slowly appeared around Andius' neck. The Nord's eyes widened. Trails of blood slid down his neck like sap from a tree. His body collapsed, sending his severed head rolling across the floor. I always thought Imperials should be careful of their greed. They might end up losing their head.
A sickly smile painted its way across Ionan's face. A pool of blood formed beneath his feet, fed by torrents from his missing arm. He took his left hand and placed it on his arm stump, summoning flames to cauterize the wound. Not a single hint of pain was shown. Ionan eyed the two Nords who were moving back towards the vault entrance. The two nodded at each other, preparing to attack, but Broki shot to Hathar, grabbing him with all his might and tossing him through the doorway of the vault. He slammed the blue button on the wall, triggering the bronze door. Hathar lay on the rocky soil as he tried to understand what had just happened. Broki, no! He scrambled to run at the closing door, only to be met by the face of his friend staring back at him for a moment before the doors jammed closed. Broki heard the pounding of Hathar on the other side, albeit faintly due to the thickness of the door. I don't know what that thing did to you, but this is a new iron and... You don't seem to get it, old one. None of me is me. None of you is you. I'm you. You are me. You're a dream. A sleepy head resting on a sleepy bed. Stop this madness! You're in there, I know it! He shouted enraged by this nonsense. I'm mad. You're mad. You think I'm in where? Here? Einan lifted his hand to his head. I'm not there. I'm everywhere. And nowhere at all. This is all a dream. But you're not asleep. And you're not even you. Brokey charged him, leaping, swinging his sword down to split him in two. Two black eyes looked up at the Nord flying, blonde hair flowing, voice bellowing. He came to the realization, the ultimate truth. He uttered it. We are Godhead. And with those words, Ionan vanished. Only his armor lay empty on the ground. Broki switched around, scanning the room for some kind of trick. But he was gone. The room was completely empty. Hathar pounded away at the vault door tirelessly. The rings began to move and the door became active. He stood back, bracing himself, preparing to die, avenging his friends. But as the gates opened, he was stunned. Broki emerged with sacks of gems dragging behind him. Come on. These aren't going to carry themselves. I think we've damn well earned it, wouldn't you say? Divine's blood, you're alive! What happened to Ironen? The victorious Nord looked back into the vault. You won't believe this, but he just disappeared. Hathar shot back. After what I saw in there, I think I'd believe anything. He grabbed a few of the sacks from Broki and slung them over his shoulder. The two trudged their way through the rocky soil and made their way out to the surface.